This video will demonstrate how to solve a limiting reagent problem when you are given a balanced reaction with a starting mass of reactants. Because this requires the use of mass to mole conversions and mole to mass conversions, uh, and that's a previous uh, skill, I will not be going over that part in particular detail. And so I've already done that step of converting these starting masses to the starting number of moles. And so the meat of this problem is actually making the determination of what our change in moles is going to be. And in order to figure that out, we have to independently test our reactants. And so our first test is for the iron 3 oxide. We use the mole ratio from the balanced reaction. And we're going to compare that against the number of moles that we've been given for the iron 3 oxide. And the outcome of this test will tell us how many moles of ammonia are necessary to completely use up the iron 3 oxide. So we can cross multiply and solve for x and that gives us a value of 0.397 moles of ammonia. We can compare this against the result we'll get when we do the corresponding test for ammonia, where we want to determine how much in moles of the iron 3 oxide will be necessary to completely use up the given amount of moles of ammonia. And in this case, we determine that we need 4.46 moles of the iron 3 oxide. And so uh, we can then compare these values against what we actually have. As it turns out, we have more than enough of the ammonia. And so this value works. That's possible. And we do not have enough of the iron 3 oxide, so this one is not possible. Once we know which one is possible and which one is impossible, we can reject the one that cannot work and use the values we calculated from the one that will work to give us our change in moles. Because we're going to use up reactants, the sign is negative, and because the iron 3 oxide is the limiting reagent, it's used up completely, and we only use a portion of the ammonia. Now, the next thing we have to do in this thinking step is determine the change in moles for our products. In this case, we have three. The procedure remains the same. We have to determine a change for the iron 2 oxide, the change for the nitrogen gas, and the change for the water. In this case, we're going to be using mole ratios, and we want to select them in a way that facilitates getting through this uh, quickly and effectively. And so we take a mole ratio from the reaction that if we wanted to, we could multiply through quickly, recognizing that it's one half. And so we use the value of reactant that we're going to use up. And the cross multiplication will allow us to determine 
how much of that particular product we're going to end up using. And so in this case we have 1.19 moles of iron 2 oxide being generated. Uh, for the nitrogen I could use whatever ratio I want to. I'm going to use the comparison against ammonia With that being 2 to 1, that makes it a lot easier for me to figure out what the value will be uh, by estimation. But for clarity's sake, we will actually do the entire thing. So this tells me that I will generate 0.199 moles of nitrogen. And finally, for the water, I recognize that I have the same coefficient, which allows me to solve this part without having to resort to using calculators or anything like that. But feel free to uh, multiply across the equals and uh, solve for the value of x. You should find that it is 0.595 moles of water. So now, once that part's done, we've determined the change in moles for everything we have, and I can simply copy this over, recognizing that because these are products, I'm going to have a positive change for the nitrogen plus 0.199 moles and for the water plus 0.595 moles. And so now that that step is complete, the remainder is very straightforward. To determine the moles at the end, and finally the mass at the end. So the number of moles I have at the end, I have none left of our limiting reagent. I have to subtract, and that will leave me uh, rounding off a bit with 2.57 moles. Uh, we generated this from having nothing, so these are all very straightforward. And mole to mass conversions are very straightforward, and so I'll just write out what those answers would be. We have nothing left of our limiting reagent. And if we take all of these quantities and add them up, what we should see is that we have a value very close to the initial masses. Uh, but this entire procedure, the linchpin is determining that change in moles using the mole ratio properly. And so verifying that this was done correctly is left as an exercise to you, the viewer.